Good evening and welcome to South Today. An Oxford University employee wanted in the United States on suspicion of murder has now been arrested in California. Andrew Warren's accused of stabbing a hairdresser to death. Stuart Timworth has the latest. Well, Andrew Warren, who's 56, was a Treasury Assistant at Oxford's Somerville College. He and microbiology professor Wyndham Latham triggered an international manhunt after the body of a 26-year-old man was found in Professor Latham's flat in Chicago last month. Trenton Cornell Darrenlew, a hairdresser, had been stabbed multiple times. Well, following a US-wide manhunt, they're now both in custody in California, and that's after handing themselves in to police. Staff at Oxford University told us that uh, they were offering to help US authorities in, as they put it, any way possible. They added, colleagues at Somerville College have now all been informed and are shocked to learn of the case. Andrew Warren, who's from Farringdon near Swindon, and Mr Latham are due back in separate courts in California in the coming days. Next tonight, rail passengers across parts of the south are facing severe disruption. It follows the closure of London Waterloo Station. It won't reopen for three and a half weeks. It's to allow for extensive works to the Eurostar terminal and other platforms. Southwest trains will be affected, running from London to Weymouth, and some trains to Portsmouth Harbour. I mean, it's just a nightmare. Like, they're not even telling us how long trains are delayed. The email says, try and avoid the station between half seven and nine in the morning. I mean basically avoid going to work. Now, did you know more people have been into space than rode across the Atlantic Ocean? But this winter, these two brothers from Hampshire are aiming to do just that. They're training to make the vast crossing from Gran Canaria to Barbados. They're raising money for skin cancer research in memory of their father. Tom Hepworth reports. Three men on a boat. Jude Massey and his half-brother Greg Bailey will have their father Pete with them in spirit. Today, it's Prosecco. In January, the boat will be lashed by 40-foot waves. We're likely to be uh, potentially in hurricanes. We've got no um, means of, of easy access to rescue if anything did go wrong. And it's 3,000 miles. You know, it takes six weeks. We'll be rowing day and night continuously. I'm more than nervous, absolutely terrified, yeah. So uh, I don't know how I'm going to manage that time when they're actually at sea, um, but um, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. Happy birthday! Pete Massey died from skin cancer, which now kills more people than any other. Happy birthday! He also had to come to terms with facial disfigurement. He had to have a quarter of his skull removed, including his left eye. Uh, after about 10 operations. He thought of himself as looking like a monster and he did not want to leave the house. And seeing that as such an important role model in my life, it was really, really difficult. Jude and Greg hope this voyage will raise awareness about the importance of protecting yourself in the sun. They're training hard physically and mentally, and that includes eating five meals a day to put on enough weight to sustain them through what will be an enormous challenge. Tom Hepworth, BBC South Today. What a journey that'll be. Very good luck to them. Now, the Football League season got underway today and last season's playoff finalist, Reading, lost 2-0 at QPR. Portsmouth got life in League One off to a winning start, beating Rochdale 2-0. Oxford won by the same margin at Oldham, whilst the MK Dons lost 1-0 to Wigan. League two now. Swindon made the long trip back from Carlisle with all three points. They won 2-1 at Brunton Park. Let's get the weather now with B Tucker. Hello, good evening. We've had some fairly heavy downpours through today with some thunder and lightning. The bulk of the showers, though, have cleared. And I think for most of us tonight, we'll see a good deal of dry weather. Still one or two isolated showers, largely clear skies, though. And that means a fairly cool night for August lows of 9 or 10 degrees. So I think the best of the sunshine will be first thing tomorrow, just a slim risk of a shower through the morning. We've got a weak weather front bringing a little bit more cloud towards the tail end of the day. So certainly for western parts, the sunshine will turn ever more hazy. It will feel quite cool as well, even in the sunshine, temperatures of 20, perhaps 21 degrees. Have a good evening. Well, that's it from us for now. We'll be back at tomorrow at quarter past five. For now, have a very good evening. Goodbye. <laughs>